Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are at in the world, welcome. My name is Abigail Wheeler. I'm the Assistant Director of Graduate Admissions at UCR School of Business, home of the A. Gary Anderson Graduate School of Management. And I'm so excited to welcome you all here today to our special admission spotlight, where you're gonna get some advice from our current students on how to shine throughout the application process. Today's session will be moderated by our lovely Chief Ambassador and Professional MBA candidate, Victoria. So without further ado, I will pass it to Victoria. Welcome everyone. So let's dive into application advice. Where to begin? A great place to get started is on our website. Uh, if you get on there, you can see a lot of information about the people that you're going to be with in class, uh, demographics, test scores, average GPA, kind of get an idea of where you would fit in with that and then the people that you're going to be with. Another thing you can check out is our ambassador page. Uh, all of us here are grad student ambassadors. You can connect with us, find out what it was like for us to go into the program and kind of get that firsthand experience. Definitely, I would like to add on to that. Uh, you should definitely check out the deadlines, especially the rounds, the priority rounds and all the three rounds. It's very important to apply as soon as possible and that gives you a better chance and an edge over the others. I also feel that you could reach out to the admissions team. Maybe you could mail them or connect to all the admissions team or the ambassadors through LinkedIn or email IDs. You can find it on the ambassadors page. Um, also, one more thing, uh, you should keep a track of the goals that you're achieving. Have certain goals with, with respect to MBA, be it MSBA, MFIN or MPAC and check them out with the curriculum. And if it fits your course, it, it's going to be good for you. Perfect. So how can you present yourself in a professional and authentic way so that you can shine? Well, I guess um, to showcase your professional experience, uh, resume is one important factor. Um, if you have any work experience, make sure and please, please make sure that it is up to date. And if you are someone who are coming from um, a non-professional background or do not have any experience, like just directly jump from undergrad to graduate. Make sure that you have some internships uh, on your resume, a few of the group projects which you did during your undergrad or a few of the uh, research work or publications which you did uh, during your course of time. And if you make sure to make sure that uh, the technical certifications which you did during your program and make sure that it is related to the graduate program which should be taking in the nearing future. The statement of purpose is your best platform to showcase who you are. Uh, own your accomplishments, express your goals, values, past experience and interest uh, in the program. Tell your story, make sure to mention numbers and um, any numbers related to your accomplishments or past experience if that's applicable and proofread, proofread, proofread. And get your feedback and make sure to keep the links of the statement between 600 to 800 words, one page or two pages and submit on a BTF. Perfect. Um, so the interview process is specifically for uh, MBA. Um, and I think that's a great option to show, show, showcase yourself, obviously, in person. So you really want to practice for that interview. You want to look up those interview questions. I know LinkedIn has some amazing uh, resources for that. So you can definitely use online resources. You can actually use uh, resources provided by the school as well, right? So you want to make sure that you're not, you know, you're not thinking, oh, like, I can't ask any questions. Not there yet. Definitely ask some questions. They're there to help you. They want to help you. You want to make sure that uh, you really put yourself out there, right? Because that's, that's the whole point of, you know, going to, into a master's program. You want to excel. You want to develop yourself. And you can't really do that if you don't ask questions, right? So you want to make sure you're asking questions. You're seeking help, seeking advice. And you're really um, using your advisors, your admissions advisors, as a resource uh, for your application so you can really shine. So the next question is, uh, what about your recommendations? Um, how do you get a strong one? Strong recommendation is very important for your application. I feel a letter of recommendation is your story to a third, from a third person point of view. And it portrays yourself through a third person. So um, 
The school requires one letter of recommendation as a mandatory, but you can submit two or maybe three. Three is, I mean, you could submit three, that's really good. Uh, make sure one is academic. Um, and if you have prior professional experience, you can add in one more uh, LOR through uh, your past employer or your current employer. Uh, you could even do two academics and one professional. Uh, I mean, that, that's going to depend on your profile. Yeah, and so when you're doing the uh, application process, you'll put in your recommender's info. Uh, I believe my memory is it's their name and definitely their email. And make sure and let them know that they're going to receive a link uh, requesting that recommendation. It won't be sent until you submit the application, especially if it's going to a work or a university email. There's a good chance it can get flagged as spam because it is an automated email. So just make sure that they know to be watching out for that. But these recommendations really do help you because it gives an idea of who you are as a person from people that worked with you, taught you, and it gives you some details that aren't going to be seen on a resume or even in your statement of purpose. So it really rounds out the picture of who you are. So how do you, how do you know if it's the right fit, right? So how do you determine if AGSM um, is right for you? So I'll actually start this. I had the opportunity, or I guess the, um, yeah, the, I would say the opportunity to be able to go to UCR my undergrad. And the journey to get there was, uh, was very, it was very difficult, but I was able to get there. And I have been uh, grateful and proud to be at UCR ever since. I loved, I loved the campus. If you haven't been to campus, please go to campus. You'll fall in love with it right when you get there. It is the perfect mix of city and, uh, you know, nature. Um, the botanical gardens here are beautiful. I absolutely loved it. And I love the fact that I get to brag that, you know, without UCR, you wouldn't have cuties. And if those of you who don't know what cuties are, it's like a mix of an orange and a tangerine. And it's it's just something so small, but I absolutely love cuties. They taste amazing. Um, and I just love to be able to say, yeah, you know, that cutie you're eating, you wouldn't have it if it wasn't for UCR. And it's just, it's just amazing. I know it's a little cheesy, but I just like to be able to brag about that. But when I got here and I met, you know, my advisors and I met you know, um, just the people around me who were trying to help me to get into school. I just knew that I really wanted to go here. And, um, you know, throughout my undergrad, I had some amazing professors who just really cared about my success. I, my cohorts, you know, my, my, uh, my classmates, they were absolutely amazing, very supportive. And then I knew when I graduated my undergrad, I was like, no, I have to, I want to go only to UCR. And I did have other options, um, other schools reaching out, but I only wanted to go to UCR. I only applied to, um, to AGSM and I was so happy that I got in and I just it just it was that feeling of knowing right when I got onto campus now that's more of a social and uh, I guess cultural aspect of it but right when I got here and I met the people and I you know met the team and I met those at admissions and uh, my entire support system here I just knew that I had to come here and it was it was um it was an amazing uh, experience opportunity and I'm glad to be here. Well, for me, I think that both UCR and AGSM values, vision, and goals are closely aligned to, to mine. Uh, UCR is named the first for the third year for social mobility, according to the US news ranking for public school. And for AGSM, there are a lot of opportunities here. Programs, professional clubs to join. Uh, already joined the ambassador program, and all I can say is the whole experience is nourishing and helping me to grow professionally and personally, and preparing me to the real world. Uh, more than that, uh, like the AGSM is offering offering the impact program, uh, which I joined because uh, the curriculum is closely aligned to the CPA exam, which I'm planning to sit for after I graduate, and I'm also decided to, to study the impact because uh, I'm looking for launching my business uh, someday in the US. And this program uh, gives me a solid, solid regulatory knowledge and best practices for taxation and accounting. So I think all of that is a great fit and an advantage for me to be here today. Well, for me, I guess uh, I come from a background of uh, data science and analytics was something which I really wanted to do right from the scratch. Uh, since business analytics is something which was very new and UCR with the AGSM was like a perfect match for me. And of course, the course duration of MSBA was um, very convenient. It is uh, as small as nine months to you can extend it up to 15 months with our convenience. 
and you can just enter the market after that we also have like two capstone projects uh, wow. which is like very hands on and uh, of course uh, with the tracks and everything um, i guess uh, agsm was the perfect match we also have like a lot of programming clubs and things like that where you can try even if you are like new to the coding and things like that uh, we can just join them and um, there's like a, there's like so many hands on experiences and of course uh, so many organizations with so many events on campus um, i i just love uh, being here so far Perfect. And so once that application uh, gets in, right, you want to trust the process. So what can you learn during this time? Um, or And what did you learn from the application process? So those of you that have more work experience might have noticed that this whole process is very similar to the job application process. And for those of you that don't have as much work experience, take this process and learn from it for what you can take for when you're applying for jobs in the future. Do your research, see if UCR or in the future a workplace is right for you. Keep track of what you need to be turning in, you know, have good time management of keeping track of deadlines uh, and, you know, maintaining that professional atmosphere, getting interview experience. That was all definitely something that I picked up was, uh, you know, keeping track of all of that information when I needed to get it in. And once you have turned all of that in, you are going to have a bit of a waiting period. And that is kind of stressful. Um, it's OK if you do need to reach out. The admissions team, they, you know, they are here for you. They're very nice people. Uh, and they'll guide you through that if you're uncertain about, you know, just I, I send an email saying, hey, I just want to make sure that I've sent everything in. And they're happy to help you out with that. So I hope you all get the answer and I hope to see you all next year. And so lastly, since we have some, since we have uh, our panelists are all from AGSM programs, um, let's all share our own uh, goals for pursuing our respective programs at AGSM. Uh, I'm from MSBA. I'm um, pursuing uh, the marketing concentration. So I'm looking forward to get into uh, the position of marketing analyst. Um, speaking about the program, uh, we have like two different tracks that is stat track and business track. So uh, this program is very welcoming to people from very, very different backgrounds. Like say we have like our classmates coming from uh, business, commerce, engineering like me, um, admin, business administration and things like that. Uh, we also have like concentrations like marketing, finance and operations, supply chain. Um, everything is just, uh, you know, uh, professional or uh, job oriented. Uh, so, yeah. And of course, the duration of the program is nine to 15 months, which is pretty much great for us because uh, you can just complete and then hit the market uh, for the professional experience. Um, so, yeah, that is about MSBA. Uh, my goals for in choosing impact is like my short term goals is to find an internship now uh, in summer and get involved in public accounting firms, get some knowledge and practices and experience. And uh, after I graduate, I'm planning to sit for the CPA exam and join, of course, a public accounting firm as well get more experience and establishing my, my business here after the long term, yeah. Hello everyone. Uh, so I'm pursuing the MFIN program and uh, my goal for pursuing MFIN program is basically I am pursuing my CFA along with studies. Uh, the MFIN program and CFA is highly aligned with the curriculum and it's so much easier for me to study CFA when I attend classes in school. Um, we have a lot of trading simulation. It, we had a lot of trading simulation in the first quarter, and uh, that was basically um, investing money in the markets and understanding your returns and so on. We had great professors which uh, who helped me throughout the quarter, and they also make you understand a lot of CFA concepts. Uh, so for me, that's an added advantage. And anyone who's looking to do uh, a CFA maybe right now or in the future should definitely join the MFIN. And uh, it's a good program for technical analytics. Uh, so definitely. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer. So I am a full-time MBA student and my ultimate goal is actually to get my CPA license. But I have a non-business background in my undergrad. I have a degree in history. And I chose to do full-time MBA to give myself a little bit more of that uh, 
rounded out business education and fill in some of those areas that I didn't have as much experience in. So I'm getting a chance to study marketing and economics and uh, information systems and things that I hadn't seen before. Uh, that even if they aren't directly related to my field, give me a better understanding of companies as a whole and the industry as a whole. That's great. Uh, so I'm actually in the uh, PMBA, which is a twin program with the same curriculum, professors, and class offerings as the uh, flagship MBA program. However, I chose PMBA because it provides a little more flexibility with classes. Uh, I did, or I do uh, work uh, at the moment. I, had, I do have three jobs. So if you do have any questions about time management, uh, you can definitely reach out to me. Um, and so I, uh, right now I'm uh, marketing concentration. I do plan to go into marketing. I initially planned to go into entertainment marketing. Um, that's still sort of a goal, but I kind of made a pivot. The school um, provided me with an amazing opportunity to meet an executive from Oracle. And he actually changed, or not changed, I guess, I guess convinced or gave me some great advice about going into data analytics with marketing. Um, so I'm trying to make that pivot. I'm not too sure yet, but definitely the goal is to be a director of marketing, um, either in an entertainment business or now newly in a, in a um, data-driven uh, industry. So I'd like to thank all of our panelists for speaking, and I'll hand it off back to Abby. Thank you, Victoria, and thank you to all of our panelists for sharing all of your perspectives. You've all walked through the application process before, so they are the subject matter experts, folks. They've successfully applied and received admission to our program and are being successful in their courses right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through a higher level of all of the things that are, are required in our application. So first, of course, you have to go online and, and start the online application. You do need to upload your professional resume, make sure that's up to date and in a, in a PDF format. You need to submit your statement of purpose and your transcripts from all universities that you have attended. Three letters of recommendation are available for, for you to utilize. Only one academic recommendation is required. We recommend you, you get as many at recommendations that can serve you. We have a test optional admissions policy. We evaluate candidates holistically. If you're an international student, you do need IELTS or TOEFL scores. There are a few exceptions um, to that. The application deadlines um, are here listed on the PowerPoint as well. We do reviews in rounds. You may have a higher likelihood of getting more scholarship funding the sooner that you submit it. However, we also recommend you submit your application when you can submit the best version of your application possible. I'd like to wrap up this session by asking each of our panelists to share one final piece of advice for all of the students here. One piece of advice that I would say uh, actually goes back into the recommendations. So because I switched majors, I didn't have enough time to make a connection with my professors, uh, you know, in the economics department. And it was also it was also during COVID. So I really didn't have that, you know, connection you'd make with a professor going to office hours or talking with them. It was really difficult. Um, so don't let that stop you. Don't let recommendations or even if you're concerned about um financials or uh, scholarships at all, don't let that stop you from applying. Um, just like Abby said, you can reach out to her, but definitely the recommendations almost prevented me from applying because I had none. And I just I just reached out to some professors. They understood my situation. I explained it to them. I let them know that I switched majors and I didn't really have the chance to connect. And because you know they're there to support you, most almost all the professors want you to succeed. Um, I had a couple that reached out to me and said that they were just going to base it off of my academics and, you know, talking with me back and forth through email and it, you know, obviously it paid off and it helped because I am here. So don't be scared to reach out if you're thinking, oh my gosh, like I never made any connections. Please reach out. You never know what professor might just be like, yeah, of course I can. Let me get to know you a little bit more or let me send me your transcripts. Let me see what, you know, what you've done or uh, your resume, you know, so I just highly recommend uh, to reach out to people, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to ask questions, and um, definitely, you have, there's a lot of resources the school provides. So don't let that stop you from applying. I would say that if you think uh, you are a great fit with AGSM, 
uh, to schedule an appointment with the admission team, uh, to know them more, to uh, like schedule an appointment with any of the ambassadors from each program you are interested in. So you can see ambassadors from MBA or Impact or FIN. Uh, so just reach them out and ask them what what the, their thoughts about the program, about the classes, about the curriculum. Uh, we are here to answer your questions. And for me, I was, as I said, in a session like that, and I have been delaying my graduate studies for three years. But during that session, I just reached out to ambassadors. I reached out to the admission team, and they were very welcoming, and they helped me a lot during the whole process. Uh, and today I'm here. Uh, I found my place here. It's really a good place to to connect with people, opportunities. And um, yeah, good luck, everyone. I would want to add in that. Uh, the entire admissions process, right from applications to getting here, can be very overwhelming, especially if you're an international student like me. I know and I've been through all. I would say just trust the process and um, have faith. Also, reach out to everybody and anyone you can at school. Uh, you came to this event, that's, that's such a beautiful thing. You could reach out to Tamra, Abby, uh, any of the admission staff, reach out to us ambassadors. We can help you in any kind of things. And for sure, trust the process. And if it gets a little tough, just try to smile and it's all going to be fine. Um, well, I guess most of the points were covered by Victoria, Zaid, and Aishi. <laughs> I guess uh, what I'd like to tell is, or a piece of advice is, um, go through the course curriculum. Um, know what you would study uh, in your course. Um, try making sure that you have a few certifications or things like that before you enter the program so that it would be very useful for you and it would be a little more, e a little easier than people who are trying to or seeing the coding and everything just like, you know, uh, for the first time. Um, and I guess, yeah, all the best. I think I would just echo, I mean, we've said it over and over, but really don't be afraid to reach out to us. That goes for the admissions and for the ambassadors. Um, I mentioned it at the beginning, but we do have our ambassador page and that has our contact info on it, our emails. Uh, I think I speak for all of us that we'd be happy to hear from you and answer your questions. Um, and kind of we can give you that first person experience of we've been there and we're going through it now. And just in general, take advantage of everything that's coming your way and all of the opportunities that are being given to you. Um, if once you do start, uh, it's not just about getting a degree. You're going to make amazing connections um, and pick up skills that aren't going to be things you can put on a resume, but are really going to take you very far. Thanks so much for coming, you guys. Wonderful. Thank you so much to our students what phenomenal individuals they are. We're so proud of them. And we're so proud of each of you for the steps that you have already taken to get to this stage of the process. You're almost there, hang in there, uh, finish strong, get in that application. Um, and it's been so lovely to be with all of you tonight. We can't wait to continue to walk with you through your, throughout your application journey and into enrollment here at UCR School of Business. Take care, everybody. Have a great rest of your day, evening, wherever you are in the world. Thanks for joining us.